but after uh, and after coming last week and Bert speaking, I was like, oh my gosh. And Bert's was all about being nice and being a good person. And this, this is much more about greed and money. So. <laughs> but um, as, as Jeff mentioned, I coach like everybody else does. And I, but I realized that there were a lot of coaches who hadn't actually started scale, had known what it's like to stress about cash flow and HR and running a business. So that's that's why I do what I do. And my vision is to make entrepreneurship easier for anyone who wants to start a company. So what I, I've broken down, and Jeff mentioned the $50 million business that, that I built, and I've done a, done a lot of analysis and broken down how we did that into seven steps. Feel free during this talk to put questions in the chat. And um, we can do, we'll do questions afterwards, but if you have them while I'm talking that, that's fine too. So I'm gonna go through the seven steps right now. So the first, the first thing that we did to start this business was had a vision. Now, <laughs> bless you. Now, now for, um, for us, now a lot of founders start out, they have an, they have an idea of a problem they wanna solve. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't us. And everybody, I really, I truly believe everybody has a business inside of them and it's finding the business, but it's not only finding the business idea, it's finding a business that's going to fit your life and how you want to live your life. So we started out, I was in my twenties. I started it with my, with my then husband and we had a vision of building a company, working together. And what if we could build the, build something that we could, that we could sell in um in a short amount of time and i mean we didn't have any experience my i just had a graduate degree in french literature <laughs> so so we really had that we set out with that specific vision and i think that's really important because founders oftentimes will start building a business because it might be a good business idea it might be a problem that needs to be solved but if it's not going to fit into your life, it can really be, you can build something that you really don't like and that you become a prisoner of later. So that was our vision. And then next, another really important part, this is the second step, is we had to find an idea that matched the vision. So, and you can reverse this too. So you, if you have an, if you have a problem that you want to solve, then you can also look at your personal vision, but those two have to go together. So, and for us, because we wanted to, because we had this goal to build something really big and sell it and see if we could retire in our thirties, we had to pick something with a scalable market size. So this is another important thing is looking at what, how do you, how do you want to live your life? And is the, the business that you're about to create, is that going to, is that going to create what you're looking, what you're looking to build? So our, and our, our, the business that we built was so niche specific and probably meant nothing to most of the world and probably will mean nothing to, mo to most of you. So, but we, we, and I, I won't go into the details, but we started a staffing agency specifically for the inside people in title insurance companies, like the people who wrote the, the title policies, examiners and searchers and things like that. So you can imagine it was such a niche market that meant nothing to most people, but meant everything to the people whose problems we were going to solve. And there were a myriad of problems that we were solving. I won't go into all of that, but it was, and it was also really good timing for that idea because of, because of how real estate was, because of the market, because of all the market conditions. And that's really important too. Timing is, is one of, they say there's a, a TED talk by Bill Gross about how important timing is in a business and it's the number one factor to determine if your business will succeed or not. So once we had that together, so we had the vision and then we, we had an idea that matched our vision, okay? And then we started planning. And again, we knew nothing. We literally knew nothing about starting a business. I had, I had tempted though through college and graduate school and my partner had worked, my, my father was at a title, my father was an executive at a title insurance company. And my, my husband then was working as an assistant manager at a title insurance company. So we had some knowledge and that, that brought that idea together. So we started planning and spent a lot of time on the business plan. 
We spent all of our weekends and nights. We actually, we went to, we went to Barnes and Noble at the time. We bought two books. One was on business planning and one was on, um, it was, it was one of those dummy books and it was how to start a temp agency for dummies. And we divided up the book. We ripped out the pages. Looking back, it's so funny that we didn't buy two books, but we ripped out the pages for the business plan and we each took sections and we wrote out we wrote out our business plan not really knowing much and not really knowing anything about business and then so I, this so that's that's a big part of it is having having the vision having the idea and doing the business planning but as most people know it it's all about the execution because you can have those first few things and i've planned businesses that i haven't executed on because once i got to the planning part it didn't seem like the execution was going to was going to come to fruition or what what we wanted or what i wanted um that to look like so next was the execution of the plan and honestly just doing it we ran into people i remember we um we ran into someone at a high school at one of our high school reunions who had said oh yeah i um I wanted he was in staffing and he said I, I wanted to start a staffing business, but I want to I want to get more time and I want to learn the business. And we had people who all throughout would come and say, Oh, I had this idea first. And you know, how many of how many people had the same idea as Sarah Blakely, who created Spanx and became a billionaire? You know, she's the one that chopped off the pantyhose and hustled and sold them to Neiman Marcus and the rest it became a billionaire so it's not about just about the idea and the planning it's then about the execution and we just started doing it so a lot of people ask me who want to become entrepreneurs or they're in the early stages of the of entrepreneurship how to even get started how to even get to the next steps and for me every business iteration that i've done or every business that i've done when i have the idea it can be really overwhelming but i've broken it down into small steps and everything about a startup or new business is going from where you're at to getting to the next step and getting to the next step. So we just started doing it. And we, I mean, we didn't even, we didn't even know we were dealing with people and we had, so if you can imagine our average, our average person employee, it was a contractor, a temp employee was, we were billing at $25 an hour. So you can imagine how many people we had to get to a million dollar weeks. And uh, it was, it was a lot of people and we didn't know anything about employment, employment taxes. And we were so shocked when we got our first, uh, we realized our first, our first margins. We we're like, oh no. And, uh, but then we started learning we just started doing it and executing on it and, and, uh, and made it happen. And then the team. So one thing I'll say about the team is, uh, is obviously it's important to have the right team. There are the people that are going to make your vision a reality for me and all of my businesses. I can trace back what worked with my co-founders and what didn't work with some of my co-founders and partners and employees and a lot of advice will tell you a lot of things that you read out there about startups and co-founders will say to find someone who's passionate about your vision and find somebody who can hustle and be part of the startup world well those are all good things but you don't really know how first of all i don't think you're going to ever find somebody who's as passionate about your idea as you are and you don't know how somebody's going to hustle they may have hustled before they might not have the hustle in them right now you just don't know those things but the one thing that you can find out is what motivates the person and what is the reason why they are why they will but they want to be part of your company and why they'll stay so for example our first we brought in a co-founder and and we had we had, there's i mean obviously there's so many other steps to this but we had advisors and we knew we wanted to sell it so we were constantly we had we had a relationship with an investment banker so we talked to him at every step and what is the next step we knew it was time to bring someone else on we found someone who's our our goal was to sell and retire we wanted to retire in our 30s and we found somebody whose vision and his motivation was he his dream was to be the ceo of a publicly traded staffing company so we didn't want to do that we wanted to leave so you better bet he stayed with it even when and i know like i heard from some uh, from our other co-founder he wanted to leave it a lot of times you know businesses can get really sticky and gnarly and with partnerships and things like that but we were 
we were really good partners because we all had we all had motivations and how the company could be a vehicle to get us to what we wanted so the and also letting go of the wrong people you know we definitely hiring is not easy and um i believe in having systems in hiring and i you know, i talk about that i i, I have uh, i have materials on that but you're never going to be 100 accurate so being able to find the right people but getting to know their motivation getting to know why a lot of times i'll talk to my clients and we'll be talking about their salesperson or whatever and they just don't they don't know the question is why like don't make assumptions on why somebody is part of your company and what is motivating them it might not be money it might be money i you don't know unless you get really curious about what they want and then number six was keep going when the things got tough you know and this is the big meaty part of it and it's it's the grit and things things got so stressful and as we if you can imagine with all those people and we have thousands of employees all over the country and there was so we were dealing with all different states all different employment laws cash flow i mean we had some really really it's times we're really on the edge as far as cash um i was having i was having kids you know i had i started the business before i ever had kids i had two babies while running this business um and so really just we had to keep on going when um i'm trying to read uh, that comment oh yeah yeah i so said I, I, <laughs> we had to keep on going when things got really tough even even when we didn't want to and this is um this is really important because when people build businesses, a lot of times it's exciting when you're successful, but being successful can also be a really, a really rough trap. And a lot of business owners find themselves in a situation where all they can dream about is getting rid of their business. I mean, I had moments where I'd be at the grocery store and I'd be dreaming about being a checker and like not, you know, not having, not that there isn't, Total, I'm sure complete stress in their life too, but having these having these visions, like these fantasies about what if I didn't have all of this responsibility? What if this wasn't always on me? So, and then um, and then number seven, I know it's we're, we're running out of time. Number seven is negotiating the exit, and that was that was also a process that took a lot of tenacity, but also it took a we had to keep it took a lot of grit too and picking ourselves back up we had we were we had a deal that was um that was about to close we're so excited about it with a public company that owned it was the company that owned monster.com and we were just we were so excited about where we were going to go with this whole thing when we get acquired by them and their their team came over to due diligence when when 9 11 happened so they were here in Los Angeles and they were actually from Ernst & Young, their office was in the Trade Center and they were here doing diligence, the towers fell. And so the, the deal ended up falling through and, and we just, we, you know, for there was a while we were, I mean, it was, it was such a terrible and depressing time for the country. And then also in our own little world, it was really, really hard for us. And then we decided to um, we decided that we were going to hunker down and keep on building and keep on growing and brushed ourselves off and and we a deal did come through uh, another another way that kind of came out of the blue. But um, anyway, so negotiating the exit and that was that was it's interesting because when you first start startups will start out watching every single penny when you're a new business owner. And then when you get towards the end and you're about to exit, you're you're often this happens a lot. You're willing to walk away from millions of dollars because you just want to get rid of the darn thing that you just worked so hard to build. So I learned a lot about that and the exit and and um, yeah. And so that's what we did. And we negotiated an exit that was great. And we did it in our early 30s. We sold it when we were 33. And so I. I've started, scaled, and sold several companies since then, like Jeff said, and I've been working with startups since 2015 with other startups other than my own, helping them to build and scale. I, I, sometimes I take on roles like head of sales or head of operations. Now I coach. I realize that there are so many coaches out there who hadn't actually owned and founded businesses, and I got really curious about that. So, And I also spent the last 10 years learning about the mental 
to na- well being and just the mental part and emotional part of being a founder. So I will stop talking and see if there's any questions. I know, I think we're a little bit over. Oh, no, you're good. That was awesome. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate you sharing that. And like to condense that into seven steps and into 20 minutes is not enough, right? Like for sure. And uh, so I, I highly encourage everybody, you know, reach out to Diane and uh, set up some one-on-ones with her, learn more about her story uh, and how she helps people. I think it's incredible. Um, one question I had real quick, and then I'll open it up, but how long you were, you were saying there's the planning process, right? And the execution process. I think one of the biggest challenges for most people is getting started. It's like, I have this great idea. When do I start? And then they plan to plan to plan to plan <laughs> to plan. And they never leave that planning stage, right? And I'm guilty of doing that in the past. And, um, and I'm wondering, like, do you have anything formula or anything like that that tends to work? Or maybe it's different with every business, but it's how long do you plan before you should just get started and learn? Because you're going you're gonna to hit bumps in the road. You're never going to have any, everything planned out perfectly. Um, and, and you're going to have to learn by doing, right, at some point. Yeah. So where, where do you get to that point where uh, maybe you just start and, and stop yeah. playing? I think like, like Cam said, I agree, start before you're ready. You know, I love to build through, and there's so, there's so many different ways to, to create a business, you know, now, and there's, there's raising money and there's, you know, and I've done, I've run best by my businesses from bootstrapping from revenue. So to me, it's just, you start. And now I have started, I have started early before and crashed and burned because I didn't do enough planning, but I also believe that if you're, you're, you're going to have like, that's sort of inevitable, I guess, to, to have that happen. So you just, you have to start. And all the people who said to us, I mean, people would come and they'd pick up the, the stat, the temps would pick up their paychecks and they said, oh, I had this idea. Or people would say, great idea. I had this idea seven years ago. You know, <laughs> like, well, we're the ones here sitting here doing it, you know? Yep. Yep. No, I love that. And I love everybody's comments on that too. Sass, best time to plant a tree is 30 years ago. Second best time right now. I love it. I love yeah, it. I mean, I think, um, you know, like about the ideas, it's like, yeah, I think about having a six pack, but I'm not doing the crunches <laughs> every day. So that's not happening, but I have the idea. <laughs> right. 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 Yep. Definitely. It's, it's all on the execution for sure. Um, anybody else have any questions? Go ahead and throw up your virtual hand if you have any right now. If not, um, we'll stick around. You know, afterwards, I think Diane said she can stick around for a little bit. So um, we can do that as well. I'm going to put the questions. Uh, different. There's a difference between being interested in success and committing to it. Yeah, absolutely, Kami. I agree. Oh, Sass, go ahead. Okay, so you said that you started the business. The vision was to retire in your 30s. So mm-hmm. why didn't you? Well, well, I did, actually. I did spend my 30s retired. But yes, the, the topic of my next my next talk is how to spend $20 million in five years. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did spend, I spent most of my, I was like semi-retired in my 30s. I was retired for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but I was also on boards of companies and, and co-founder of, of companies at that time too. But I mostly, I mostly served and worked out and shopped. <laughs> I love it. Raise kids. 